Hey everyone, so a few days ago, I ended up posting up this video, which was based off of a new AI workflow that I was playing around with. I thought it came out pretty decent, but of course I ended up spending the next few days refining it and pushing it on a little bit, and we ended up here. Just to be clear, your plan is to attack the woman that has the dragon. I am available for voiceover work and I do work really cheaply because I am really bad at it. So today we're gonna go over the workflow that I use to create this, how you can do it yourself and apply it to any style that you're aiming for. What we're really talking about here is the current limitations of AI video and some tricks that we can use to overcome them. We'll also wrap up with a few other AI video tools and techniques. So yeah, let's get started. So before I start sounding like the it's just not there crowd, I did want to take a second to express how I think we're at this amazing point in AI video. I often say this moment feels a lot like we're living in 1896 and the Lumiere brothers have just handed us a camera and they're saying, I don't know, what do you want to do with this? And what's really awesome is that it's not just one camera, it's like thousands of different cameras and it's not just one person they're handing it to, but all of us. So with that out of the way, let's go take a look at our reskinning of a scene from The Office into Game of Thrones. So this is our initial piece of stock footage. It is clearly a hipster orientation day at The Office. I did select this shot because I think this would actually be a kind of a tough one to pull off in prompting. You've got two characters that are walking next to each other, talking as well, and a camera dolly move. So one, I don't want to necessarily call it a problem or an issue, but you know, this common theme in AI video, particularly with Gen 2's image to video, is that it tends to be very bullseye centered characters that kind of have a slight head move towards you as the camera sort of has a pan on it. And to be honest, it'll probably mostly stay that way until we can text prompt along with an image prompt. And that's why I think using a video reference can be very powerful in terms of getting the thing that you're looking for. Now, the first step is one that admittedly many of you had guessed. It is Runway ML's Gen 1. You can also look into EBSynth if you're looking for a free alternative. I haven't really played around with it, but the people that use it seem to like it. But honestly, I think that Gen 1 kind of quickly got overshadowed and overlooked when Gen 2 came on the scene. And it's really kind of a shame because I think Gen 1 actually has a lot to offer. And I think it's on the verge of being rediscovered. Obviously, there was the Snap video that was going around by Martin Harlan kind of recently. Um, yeah, this was really, really cool. And I think really showcased that Gen 1 wasn't necessarily done yet, but there are a lot of limitations to Gen 1. Uh, even Martin had mentioned that essentially it works as a stylizer. It does not work as a rotoscoper. Something else that I noticed is that when, you know, Salieri here makes his turn, uh, is that as we move over this way, we have this bookshelf that's right here, which I think is probably a bookshelf in Martin's actual space. Um, because when he makes the next snap into the Planet of the Apes, you can see that the bookshelf has now turned into a burnt out building. Martin had even mentioned as much in a tweet. Is it still a tweet? Are we, is it an X? It's a tweet. It's a tweet, isn't it? Uh, anyways, a few months back, Martin had said, AI is not a green screen. Make sure that the background of your source has a structure according to your target. Otherwise, the best jungle will just look like wallpaper. But all of that did get me thinking, well, what if it could be? So my initial test run, I really wasn't worried too much about the overall look. I rolled this up as an image style reference. It's really not that great, but you know, at least it holds the poses and then ran the whole thing through Gen 1 and this is what we got. This actually really isn't that bad, but you can see all of the hallmark Gen 1 things. Again, the background with the file folders now is kind of a library-ish thing. Um, I do like the fact that it sort of turned that left side of the screen into kind of a candle sconce. That was actually pretty well done. So to create the rotoscoping and green screen, I actually just ended up using Runway ML. Um, anybody that's done rotoscoping knows how much it sucks. So I was really impressed with how easily this worked. You just basically create some anchor points and uh, it, it happens. For our background, I ended up just going over to Mid Journey and literally the prompt on this is a hallway in Winterfell, aspect ratio 16.9. Now, admittedly, it did take me a couple of rolls to get there. Like none of these would work because the perspective wasn't quite right, but you know, I did eventually end up landing on one that had the perspective that I was looking for. So I had my hallway image. It was just a matter of rolling back over to Gen 2 and using that as an image prompt. Again, you don't really have much control in Gen 2. It just kind of does its own thing. 
but generally you're going to find that it's going to be a zoom in with a slight camera move to the right or to the left. In this case, I knew the shot was going to work, but I also knew that I was going to have to reverse the shot since our characters are walking towards us and this camera move is pushing in. And with that, our office redesign has now taken a very weird turn. So once I knew that that was going to work, it was time to head back over to Mid Journey to create characters to use as image references. And in this case, I ended up using characters prompted with a green screen background as well. I figured that would help not trip Gen 1 up as much if I prompted characters with a background and then tried to apply it to video with a green screen, I'm pretty sure that the image background would end up overtaking the green screen. To be fair, it did take a number of rolls to get there because Mid Journey is just gonna do Mid Journey things to you. Uh, like this hilarious one where not only do we have camera equipment, but Mid Journey decided to put our actor into a green outfit as well, which completely defeats the purpose of having a green screen. At one point, it also gave me two Jon Snows standing next to each other against a white background. Um, that was a pretty strange glitch. Slapping everything together, it worked out pretty well. We did get our green screen background and our office workers are now, you know, sort of Z-list. Game of Thrones characters. There is a pretty significant vignetting that ended up happening with the green screen, but it's really not that big a deal. You can mask or, you know, key that out pretty easily. As a final step, I ended up taking that output and then running it through Kyber, which I always feel has kind of a nice stylistic pass and kind of ends up baking everything together. Uh, continuing on with the experiment, I ended up taking this piece of stock footage, a uh, woman standing in a field and turned her into a pirate. Utilizing a Leonardo.ai image of Danielle Van Denonk as a pirate, uh, we have used this image in the past on the channel where we also learned that A, this looks nothing like Danielle Van Denonk and B, Danielle Van Denonk is a Danish footballer. Gen 1 took that image and that input video and gave us this, which, you know, admittedly is not that great. I'll say taking that output and then running it through Kyber did help out the overall stylization quite a lot, but we're still sort of left with kind of a stuttery, jittery kind of look. So I ended up taking this and then going over to Replicate to run an interpolate on it. Ultimately got us this. The interpolated version is obviously on the right. Yeah, it just definitely looks a lot smoother and a lot cleaner. There are still some problems, obviously, with the coherency in the hands, but overall, I think it looks pretty decent. And Kyber is actually coming along a pretty good way. Their new motion beta feature, which we took a look at recently, very much showcases that. So circling back to the green screen idea, I wanted to see what we could do with the Sky Glass app. I don't know if you guys have played with this very much, but basically it's a phone app that kind of auto green screens and creates 3D environments for you. What's kind of cool is that apparently you can create your own environments if you want to. I guess this all works in Unreal or you can prompt for your own background environment. So I'm just using the demo for this, but I did put this together very quickly. Has anyone seen Lydia? She uh, has my burdens. Oh, hey, you're awake. So it's a little rough around the edges, but I actually think it's kind of cool. So this is our source footage. Uh, it doesn't obviously do the greatest job in terms of rotoing, but again, I'm not in a lit environment uh, in this particular video, and I'm not standing against a green screen. So, um, you know, overall, it's actually pretty impressive for what it's doing. Props to Uldveg here, our mid-journey created image reference. Um, this guy just looks super happy and I totally want to drink mead with him. Overall, I really do like this method a lot. I mean, on the one hand, yes, it is pretty much just rotoscoping, but I've always been a really big fan of that kind of scanner darkly waking life look. And I do think it's really cool that you can invite some friends over to your house or maybe get some actors together. And basically you have kind of your own duct taped version of Disney's The Volume. I will say that the lip sync was a little bit off on my video and to that we should look to friend of the channel, Uncanny Harry, who just posted this video. Those are telling me that we're better off going our separate ways. Are you sure I can't change your mind? Yes, I'm certain. You're a decent, attractive woman, Helen. In this video, Harry is using Wave to Lip. I believe that's 11 labs that he's using for the voices and then Wave to Lip to basically animate the lips to look like they're synced up. Lastly, I wanted to let you guys know about finalframe.net built by Benjamin DeCraker. As most of you know, most of the AI video generators at this point are around three to four seconds. But one little trick that you can pull is that if you take the final frame of your video and then re-input that as an image prompt, 
you kind of end up doubling the time. So a quick and easy way of doing this is we have this really happy guy at an office uploading him into final frame and hitting extract final frame we have the final frame uh re-uploading this as a new image prompt into gen 2 and then hitting generate uh we basically now have a video that we can splice together with our previous video creating a six to eight second long clip it definitely looks like there is more coming from final frame so definitely give benjamin a follow so that you'll know when that drops so that's it for today please let me know if you've seen anything that's amazing in the world of ai video or imagery or just drop a comment if you want to say hi i thank you for watching my name is tim